Abby Choi was a Hong Kong socialite and model with an explosively luxurious lifestyle. And with hundreds of thousands of followers and more than $100 million in the bank, she had already been featured on the front pages of Vogue and L'Officiel. But on February 21st, 2023, only four weeks before posting this video, the young model suddenly disappeared. Hundreds of officers were assigned to the case in a desperate bid to find her, this even including Hong Kong's elite task force, the Flying Tigers. However, sadly, their efforts would come to an abrupt and shocking discovery only three days later. And with fraud, corruption, and serious allegations across the board, the culprits behind this crime are now being described as a real-life parasite family. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, folks. My name is Adrian, and welcome or welcome back to another video by Coffeehouse Crime. Today we're looking at the unfolding case of Abby Choi. Since Abby's death last month, this has been my most requested case to date, and to be honest, there is very good reason for it. This has become Hong Kong's most notorious case since 2013, and the details behind this one are quite frankly unbelievable. Small disclaimer by the way, but the details in this one are changing every single day as they unfold, and while I do vet all of the information I put into my stories, the details are subject to change. And as always, just let you know that I post true crime and strange cases here weekly, so if that does sound like your kind of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, with that said, please grab yourself a coffee, pull up a seat, and get ready for the deep dive. This is the case of Abby Choi. Welcome back to the bustling city of Hong Kong, folks. And I do mean back, because we've been here once or twice before. Hong Kong is characterised by its abundance of skyscrapers, and, of course, the Kowloon Peninsula. The city is a beautiful urban paradise, and has one of the most thriving economies in the world. And naturally, with an economy so healthy and strong, much of it is focused on the financial, tech, and service industries. Hong Kong is also the 10th largest trading entity in the world, and due to its ongoing challenge with space, it is no surprise that it imports over 90% of its food. With a population of 7.5 million residents within 400 square miles, it is extremely easy to feel both small and overwhelmed here. The streets of Hong Kong have the capability of making anyone feel claustrophobic, and one of the only ways to feel a sense of space in the city is by renting a junk boat. Now, that doesn't mean you have to get cosy with bags full of trash and last night's dinner. The word comes from the Javanese Zhong and the Chinese Chuan and junk boats are now an international symbol of Hong Kong. And with bright red sails and a dark wooden structure, I can absolutely see why. Quite frankly, these things are beautiful. Anyway, it's here amongst the very elite of Hong Kong that we find internationally renowned model and socialite Abby Choi. Born on July the 11th, 1994, Abby Choi Tin Fung was born into a very wealthy family. She was the youngest of four daughters, and alongside her father and mother Chiang Yin Fa, the family of six never experienced any real physical hardship. Owning multiple construction businesses throughout Hong Kong and China, Abby and her family lived a luxurious life within Fragrant Harbour. Her mother is said to own many properties and multi-million dollar assets, which means that whatever their hearts desired, they easily could have. Due to Chinese privacy laws and their own personal volition, not much is actually known about her family or her history. However, moving into her own adult life, Abby decided to step into a very highly public spotlight. Rolling back to the month of June 2012, Abby began her influential journey on Instagram at the very young age of 20. And with huge amounts of money at her disposal, her first picture online showed off her Lady Dior handbag, which, by the way, is worth £5,100 or $6,100. She slowly worked her way into including her own face, which included images of her sitting in the presidential suites of the Ritz-Carlton. By now, whether for money or personality, or perhaps even both, she had started to grow quite a large audience. Being young, pretty, and seemingly gentle, her following started to grow even faster once she started receiving invites to exclusive parties. And, as you can likely imagine, this is where her influencer career began to take off. This included lucrative parties with Dior and many other luxury designer brands. And of course, these events were in between lavish holidays to places such as Bali and fashion weekends in Paris. And alongside her family's financial strength, she was able to attend increasingly expensive events and eventually mingle with various celebrities. But behind all of this and in the background, Abby found love at the very young age of 18. 
She married a man named Alex Kwong Kong Chi while she was still a teenager, and went on to have two children with him. And although their marriage would eventually end in divorce, just three years later, she would ultimately marry again. It is crucial to highlight here that, after breaking up, Abby maintained a very strong relationship with Alex and his entire family, and this included regular meetups with plenty of gifts. In fact, just after breaking up, she purchased a luxurious apartment in Kadori Hills for Alex's entire family, which, by the way, is one of Hong Kong's most expensive suburbs. Now, this apartment is an integral part of the story, but in 2016, Abby purchased it in Alex's father's name, Kwong Kao, for 67 million Hong Kong dollars. Which, by the way, is the equivalent of 8.5 million US dollars, or 7 million pounds. Taking a closer look at the apartment, the 1800 square foot four bedroom home was a feature of absolute luxury. It included a balcony, marble floors and walls, an impressive courtyard, and many other striking details. Again, this is one of the most expensive and exclusive areas to live in Hong Kong. Not only that, but as a matter of trust and care, she purchased the property in Kwong Kao's name. Now, there are several reasons for this. Financially speaking, it saved her almost 1 million US dollars in stamp duty fees. She purchased it as an investment, and although she had recently made the decision to divorce Alex, it meant that both he and her two children now had a safe and luxurious place to live. But being under Cal's name, both he and his wife would eventually move in there too, meaning that the expensive Kadori Hill apartment was now home to three generations of the Kwong family, all while excluding Abby herself. So, technically speaking, Kwong Kao was merely a trustee of the apartment, and since Abby could prove that she purchased the property herself, it meant that if she needed to, she could dispute the ownership. I can imagine that, much like many scenarios in life, Abby was in a very difficult position, because although she purchased the entire property by herself, she was getting no benefit from it. I mean, granted, it did keep her children safe, but her ex-husband and his entire family were essentially part of her past now, and it must have felt quite awkward to keep all of them on board. It's a situation that would get worse over time too, and although it sounded like a good idea to begin with, how long would she have to pay for all of them out of her own pocket? Would one year be enough? Maybe three? Or ten? So, this is where I need to tell you about Anthony. 31 years old at the time, he was Alex's older brother, which also meant that he was Abby's ex-brother-in-law. And much like the rest of the family, Abby took way too much accountability in looking after him too. Years before, when the marriage between Abby and Alex was still going well, Anthony was unemployed and struggling to get by. Feeling sorry for her brother-in-law, she hired Anthony to be her personal chauffeur. These arrangements allowed a good bond to form between them, and not long later, he often referred to Abby as his sister. His Instagram account, where he named himself the monk and preached to always be calm, includes many photos of the two together. She also fronted multiple small businesses for him. This included a pancake stall in the city, which he ran whenever he wasn't needed as her driver. It is alleged that between these two roles, he made a very tidy sum of money. Anyway, moving forward and after the divorce, Abby eventually found a new love. And in the year 2016, she and a new partner named Chris Tam hosted an opulent legal ceremony for friends and family to enjoy. A wealthy businessman living in Hong Kong, Chris also came from a family with a fortune. His father is the founder of a well-known and highly reputable restaurant chain, known as Tam Jai Yunnan Mixian. Abby and Chris went on to have two children together. And despite Abby having two of her own children before Chris, all four kids were known to enjoy each other's company. Moving forward, the family of four, sometimes six, spent many weekends together in their multi-million dollar home. They also went on recurring holidays to Disneyland, and took frequent trips in their personal yacht. Alright for some, hey? Now, Abby's family life didn't stop or slow her ongoing success. With her influential connections and capital, she eventually expanded her career from a mere trendsetter into corporate and mainstream media. And thanks to her attractive physique and sense of style, this would eventually result in her featuring on many well-known front page covers, including Harper's Bazaar, L'Officiel, and Vogue. However, behind closed doors, and as the year 2023 approached, things were not going well between Abby and the Kuang family. The Kuangs had essentially been living rent-free in her apartment for just over six years now, and Abby, she was getting restless at the situation. Although she was initially fine with the arrangements, she was beginning to realise through her older age that she was being taken advantage of and in all honesty, didn't owe them anything. You see, at the time of buying the apartment, Abby was young, naive, and very impressionable, and it's reported that Alex's father may have persuaded her to buy it for them. And now, Abby wanted the apartment back, and unfortunately, that wasn't the only bad news circulating around the family. 
Unknown to her at the time, but the Kwongs were getting very low on cash. We'll begin with the head of the family, Alex's father. But several years prior, Kwong Kao used to be a respected police sergeant for the Hong Kong Police Department. He was apparently good at his job and garnered a very good reputation. However, all of this fell apart in the year 2005 when he was accused of assaulting a woman. Instead of fighting these allegations, he resigned instead. And in return, Hong Kong PD turned a blind eye to his former accusations, never following up with any form of punishment or reprimand. But Cao was not the only one displaying questionable behaviour in the family. It turns out that Alex was up to no good too, and his actions had left him on the run for several years. It was in the year 2015 that he launched an underground investment scam which involved gold, and after winning the trust of four wealthy businessmen, they all invested 5 million Hong Kong dollars into his scheme. But rather than try and earn a profit for all of them, Anthony ran away with their money instead. In fact, unknown to everyone else at the time, but he had also robbed various people and places. This included the theft of 39 necklaces, 32 bracelets, 13 golden bars, 102 gold grains, 6 pendants, and 10 tails of gold. To add to all of this, Alex's brother, Anthony, was also in an eye-watering amount of debt. And despite being given a second and then third chance with Abby by being her chauffeur, and Mr. Pancake Man, his ridiculous spending habits dwarfed any of the earnings he made. You can actually see through his Instagram that he was determined to put a facade of luxury in front of others. But behind this wealthy front was a man in very crippling debt, and in the year 2019, he was eventually sued by his local bank. So let's complete the circle here, and although Alex's mother is the least of four evils, she too was having financial issues, as just three years prior, she had been declared bankrupt by the court. Recent years had created a very stark contrast between Abby and her former-in-law family, and of course, she was guilt-tripped for this. The family watched on as they witnessed her grow in maturity, fame, fortune, and success and, all in the meanwhile, they were stagnating and losing capital. Abby was beginning to become internationally recognised, and her own personal wealth had surpassed over 100 million Hong Kong dollars, the equivalent of 12 million dollars, or 10 million pounds. Anger and jealousy often manifest themselves in rather convoluted ways, and although it's obvious from an external point of view that she was not to blame for their misgivings, and, quite frankly, awful grip on finances, they still resented her all the same. Abby felt that disparity, and furthermore, felt it was finally time to stop with all the freebies and handouts, more specifically that $8 million apartment. As you can likely guess, that conversation went terribly, and Cow even threatened to kill Abby if she kicked them out. Abby was very upset with the situation, and sought legal counsel immediately. However, even in that moment, the young woman clearly had a heart of gold, because apparently, despite their threats, she even began to look for a new home for the family, and incredibly, even had plans to buy it for them too. Okay, sure, it may have been a step down from $8 million, but, being pretty blunt here, could they really have expected anything as good? However, before her plans could develop any further, Abby Choi would suddenly disappear. It was on Tuesday, the 21st of February, 2023, that Abby suddenly vanished. She had left in the early afternoon to pick up her daughter from school, but when the final bell for home finally arrived, her mother was nowhere to be found. Both phone calls and text messages elicited no response, which raised concern amongst her daughter's teachers and friends. As a result of her job and lifestyle, Abby was obsessed with her phone, and to miss all notifications and incoming calls was strangely out of character for her. To make things worse, all activity through her social media profiles had abruptly stopped too. And so, just two hours later, she was reported as missing, and the authorities were very quick to get to work. Sadly, you know how it goes. The rich socialite types of this world often get special expedited treatment, and so it is probably no surprise that more than 150 officers were put onto the case. Anyway, it didn't take long for investigators to get their first clue. On the afternoon that she disappeared, a surveillance camera from her apartment complex captured her wearing a white-sleeved top, white pants, white slippers, and a purple handbag. The time of this footage indicated that she was likely trying to pick her daughter up from school, and furthermore, the car to pick her up looked very similar to local residents. 
That being the seven-seater car previously used by Abby and her chauffeur, Anthony. Interviewing her ex-brother-in-law and his entire family yielded no positive results, as sadly, the entire family claimed they hadn't seen her since the day before her disappearance. With no luck, the authorities resorted to checking out the vehicle's GPS records, and what they found was very concerning. It turns out the vehicle had been driven to Taipo District in Long Mei Tsuen, which was a 20-mile drive out of Hong Kong. With this rather suspicious information, dozens of officers were immediately deployed to the area to investigate. They conducted door-to-door -door interviews right across the village, poured over surveillance footage from local houses, and collected dash camera footage from all local parked vehicles. By Friday afternoon, which was 72 hours after Abby had disappeared, and only 24 hours since Taipo Village had become an area of interest, detectives honed in on a ground floor flat of a three-story house. And sadly, nothing could have prepared them for the horror they would find inside. Excluding a well-equipped kitchen, the entire home was unfurnished. Tarp covered the windows, floors, and walls. And although I won't go into the exact details, what I will say is that inside the refrigerator were two human legs. The kitchen also contained a meat slicer, an electric saw, a cleaver, a chopper, a meat mincer, face shields, and even raincoats. They also found two large soup pots that were boiling away on the stove, and it transpired that inside these pots was a human skull and several rib bones. The authorities were distraught by the haunting scene, and as soon as the news got out, both speculation and outrage poured across the country, and eventually the globe. Following extensive analysis of all surveillance cameras in the area, various members of the Kwong family were seen behaving rather suspiciously. This would soon prompt a search of the surrounding area for the rest of Abby's remains, which was carried out by over 100 members of the Hong Kong police. This included the use of expert divers, tracer dogs, data analysts, and even drones, but sadly, the search failed to yield any more of her dismembered remains. With parts of Abby's body still missing, investigators confirmed they were interested in a large area of landfill, but sadly, this search too turned out to be fruitless. To this day, or at least at the time of posting this video, Abby's torso is still yet to be found, and the authorities are yet to disclose any more information relating to the crime scene. In case you're wondering, yes, it does seem like the Kwongs are responsible for her death, and even more shockingly, it seems the entire family were in on it, of course excluding her own children. And so, the big question now is, what precisely happened to Abby Choi on the day that she disappeared? This is the story that we know so far, but scaling back to Tuesday afternoon, Abby arranged for Anthony to pick her up from Kadori Hills so the two could then pick her daughter up from Harrow International School. Knowing this typical arrangement, Anthony and the rest of the Kwong family planned to use this time frame to their advantage, and abduct her in plain sight. Unaware to her at the time, but Kwong Kao had made arrangements for her death weeks before her abduction. He rented out the village house in Lung Mei Tsuen at the price of 10,000 Hong Kong dollars, or 1,300 hundred dollars or eleven hundred pounds, with the sole intention of destroying all evidence of her murder. After being abducted, Anthony allegedly drove her to the entrance of Lion Rock Tunnel, where Alex Kong was waiting to board the vehicle. After getting in, they continued northeast to Lung Mei Tsuen, where they met their father at the property. Abby Choi was reported missing later that evening, but when police officers contacted the Kwongs for any information, the two brothers and father allegedly gave misleading statements. Suspicion arose when their stories did not match one another, and, of course, three days later, authorities raided the property. Following the savage discovery, authorities immediately got to work on locating the suspects Anthony, Cow, Alex, and Lee. Alex's brother and both of his parents were apprehended on the same evening of February 25th. However, the authorities were unable to locate Alex himself. As the devastating news broke around the town and beyond, Alex became the city's most wanted man, and everyone was on the lookout for him. And seriously, not a single soul wasn't talking about this story. As the citywide manhunt raged on, authorities raised the stakes by offering a 200 million Hong Kong dollar reward to anyone who could help catch Abby's killer. This case became so high profile that members of the city's most elite special forces, also known as the Flying Tigers, were deployed. And seriously, Seriously, these guys are 100% badass. Thankfully, Alex was eventually seized the very next day by officers at the Tung Chung Development Pier. At the time, he was attempting to flee the country by sneaking on board a yacht. 
found on him was over 500,000 Hong Kong dollars, and a further 4 million Hong Kong dollars worth of luxury watches and jewellery. The man was planning to escape as a stowaway after bribing a yacht sailor with 100,000 Hong Kong dollars. However, thankfully, he would find himself in a jail cell instead. So I guess the big question now is, what will happen next? And you know, that is a very good question. Since their arrests, the police have now formally charged Cow, Alex, and Anthony with murder. Abby's mother-in-law, Lee, was charged with perverting the course of justice. And Cow's mistress has also since been arrested on suspicion of aiding Alex to flee the country. Two further individuals have since been charged on the same premises, which included the sailor who was going to help Alex flee, and one of Alex's friends. According to the laws of Hong Kong, a conviction for murder carries a mandatory life sentence. You know, prior to 1993, the death penalty was the sole legal punishment for murder, but has since been fully abolished. With this case happening so recently, it is not yet known when the Kwong's family's trial may be. Hong Kong's legal system is generally quicker than the Western world, but it's very likely we'll have to wait until 2024. By the way, due to the nature of this case, many have been referring to the Kwong family as a real-life version of the movie Parasite. Parasite was a movie released in 2019 and received a lot of praise for its well-written story. It follows a poor family that schemes their way into a wealthy family's home, infiltrating their house by posing as unrelated, highly qualified individuals. I won't ruin the movie, but it's got an 8.5 star rating on IMBD for a reason. If the case of Abby Choi interests you, then I do recommend it, you'll probably like it. Tributes have since poured in from Abby's family, colleagues, and many friends, including her most recent husband, Chris Tam. Speaking through a friend, Chris described his late wife as a kind-hearted individual who always wanted to help others, and always supported and loved him. He speaks about how grateful he is to have met her, and feels hopelessly lost now that she has been so cruelly taken from the world. Friends described her as loving and kind, protective and motherly, yet successful and strong all at the same time. And honestly, personal thoughts, this story absolutely sucks. Now, Abby may have been born into fortune, but she was exceptionally good at mixing fashion with her own personal style. And of course, these two things led her to become one of the world's most recognisable fashion icons. But despite her fame, fortune, and success, she was still adamantly there for those that she loved and cared about. She went beyond the call of duty to look out for her ex-in-law family. And even after being threatened with her own life, she still planned to buy an entire home for them. The parasitic Kuang family are rotten to the core, with fraud, corruption, assault, and now murder under their belts. They saw dollar signs behind a caring young woman who gave too much and, tragically, their greed overrode any sense of care for another human's life. As a result, Abby will never see her children grow up, never see or enjoy her successful career, and never know what she could have become. And sadly, the world won't either. Her most recent husband, Chris, has since vowed to look after all four children, which, by the way, includes him adopting the children of the father who murdered his wife. Honestly, I have huge respects for the man. The amount of pain he must be going through is simply unimaginable. Yet still, regardless, he answered the call of duty for those four children. In other news, Abby's actual mother has since filed a court injunction to forbid Kwong Kao from selling the luxury apartment in Kadori Hills. But let's be honest here, with the evidence stacked so high against him and the rest of his rotten family, I don't think they're going to be needing it anyway. And that just about wraps up our case today, folks. I don't think there's much more I can share. Of course, there'll be more information coming out in the future, but at least at the time of this video being recorded, that is pretty much all we know. As always, I will give you any updates I find on this case, either in a pinned comment down below, on my social media, or eventually in an update video. But anyway, what are your thoughts on this case? To me, this one is absolutely wild. I can see why they're being called the Parasite Family, and honestly, I'm not surprised why this has got so much attention. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And of course, if you have any other case recommendations, please feel free to drop me an email. Anyway, folks, that just about does it. So as always, I'll see you again very soon for another video. Until that moment arrives though, remember to look after yourself, look after each other, and of course, stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.